Jerry, can you get the panel ready? Yeah. Okay. So the panel needs to have, you want to put six up on there? I would, but if we're using BHB tape, because it's such a big panel. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm, I'm right on board with so that. So let's make a materials list for me and I'll go get it. So this is this has already been passed with the turn up on. But what, what you should do though, is get somebody to help you set that up there and kind of mock it up and so find out where you you're going to put the Z brackets. Do you have Z arch. brackets? Yeah, you do have Z brackets. But he doesn't have enough. I have more. Okay, so you got some, so I'm not going to get more. But uh, you need to have somebody help you set that up there so you can get an idea of what it's going to look like for the arch and everything. So yeah, where so the best compact contact points are and then maybe mark the best contact points and then come put them on and don't necessarily go by what the uh, holes in the panel are if we have to drill our own holes okay. for those that's fine just if you're drilling from the back end make sure you put a piece of wood in between so you don't go through the panel okay some way to dispose of it but i got a fuse holder here um you gave me this that's a 30 amp 30 for between the battery and the uh, fuse block 100 this is a 200. 200 for the inverter. Okay. But the inverter's already got a fuse on it. Okay, then we don't need it for that. Okay. Got a boatload of these things. Got two of these. I only came up with two of these DC sockets. Two more? No, I, well, two more we could put in, but you can always add them later on. But we got one for the front and one for the back. The one in the back's the refrigerator, one in the front's for your accessories. I need two in the back because one needs to be for the water pump. Here's all you got to do. Take uh, one of these when it's mounted and go get a two into one at a truck stop and push it in there and you'll have two. What, what, why are you mounting a water pump into this? Because it's a DC water pump. Well, we can just wire it into the battery though, or into the fuse block. Yeah, except we don't know when um, Dan's gonna have the water situation. Okay, well, just get a two into one uh, for these. Or I can add some later, but I want to put both of them back here. Well, the, uh, plugging a, 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 a full-time appliance into one of these is not really what you want to do. Oh, so that's not from our refrigerator. I, oh, really? No, you can, the refrigerator is probably going to come with a cigarette plug, right? So it Yeah, so that you'll plug into this. Because if it already comes with a cigarette plug, a water pump, on the other hand, is going to come with bare wires. And so you're going to have to add a cigarette plug to it. It's better to just hardwire to the fuse block, like Jamie said. That's what the fuse well, block's for. Not gonna happen, just Depends on who, how qualified the person is that does the job. Because personally, I would clip the wire on the refrigerator and put a fuse on the hot side and do the same thing. Put it in the fuse block. We want to put the junction box on the back side because we're going to be tapping into the uh, solar controller on the back, right? Okay. Yeah. So look, look at this from the side. You can't put a bracket here and a bracket here and put one here without bowing that panel. How about if we put, so what if we put a bracket here and a bracket here and then one's on the ends? Oh, one's on the ends in the middle? Yeah. That would work. Okay. Well, so I don't know. I, don't... I think it'll work. Okay. We can just put them closer. Good. If I have to, I can get some Simpson brackets at the hardware store. But it's They're, curved uh, this way also. Yeah. So it's. So we put yeah. two here, like one, and then another foot, foot and a half here, so they're close, and the ends stick out. And then on this end where it curves, you put one there and one in the front. So you've we've got, got, we've six. got eight brackets. Okay. Yeah, you can even do eight brackets as far as that goes. But. So my suggestion is, you know, put this, put this so there's some room in the back. You want to be able to open the door without hitting things and that kind of stuff. And your gland is going to go back here. And the gland will go back here. Yeah, wherever we're gonna go, come in. If we decide where we're gonna come in, you want to do it right here, and yeah. then run the wires down yeah, this way. Yeah, the, the more to the side it is, the better, and, and we can put it here, and that's fine, and run it down. But my suggestion is, with this thing sitting up there, mark the parts, mark the points on the roof that seem to be within that sort of relatively flat area, yeah. and that's where, and then mark it, and that's where we put the brackets. Also, make sure you're in between those ribs. Yeah. So that doesn't mess us up. Yeah. Okay. They're gonna be drilling the, the panel. We're not off drilling of the, the roof. vehicle. Huh? We're not. We're, we're oh, not gonna drill on the roof. Oh, you mean drilling the panel? Yeah, yeah. Uh, drilling the, the aluminum frame. Yeah. On the roof, we're gonna use VHB tape, oh. so nothing gets drilled. Look at the size of this gap. Yeah. Okay. There's a half inch there. Yeah. I can stick my finger all the way down in there. And here is what we found yesterday. Oh, the way that's made, it won't get well, uh, moisture in. Yeah. Wow. So we can come in here, come over there, yeah. down through there, and around.
around and we don't have to drill a hole in. we yeah. can use this that's we'll just we'll just put a couple holes in here run the wires down through there it's already gasket because there's one on this side mm -hmm. right it's brilliant so you don't need space for the gland up there then nope apparently not nope wow. just make sure the junction box is on the back side when you do it <clears throat> yeah we need our wires on yeah, the back it side. is wires right on now. the back yeah okay we're still going to put the connectors up here what do you mean, the uh, MC4 connectors? The MC4s, there still has to be connectors on the outside so you can take the panel off, put the panel on. Absolutely. Yeah. So, but the ones that are in here can come down through here, run inside here, all the way back down there, and the solar controller is right here. Okay. Do you want to fuse them? They like fuse them? They're going to be on the, uh, they're going to be on the fuse block. Okay. Good, good deal. I'll be right hey. back. So. Can you do me a favor and sure. can you get that plastic off of both these batteries? Now, this is actually an education for you. Yes, it is. This is a 100 amp per hour battery if it's lithium. Ah. <laughs> pretty cool, huh? Yeah, pretty light. Pretty light. Really light. Yeah. Now, there's all kinds of hoops you got to jump through in order to use lithium, which is all this extra stuff here. But they're light. You got to give them that. Yeah, they're really light. Wow. So, I uh, get the plastic off them, put the studs in the in these the are, rings because we're going to use those for the collectors. These are 100, 100 amp hours? Yeah, 100 amp hours. So, I'm going to make one-out jumpers between the two batteries that'll make sure that they're okay do you want one these battery down yeah because okay. i'm gonna have to measure it first thing we do is because there's two batteries we want to tie the two batteries together in parallel positive the positive negative the negative that turns them into one battery and you want to use a nice big cable and i'm using one out in this case because it'll carry 245 amps which is more than anything that'll go through these things so we're going to make jumpers a red one to go positive to positive black one to go negative to negative right that turns the two batteries into one battery series essentially parallel 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 okay now the key is and this is this is either more work or less work no oh, good less work these are going to go on that right mm -hmm. and they're properly sized these are one aught five sixteenths and so they fit. So this lug is going to go on here, okay? And it's either going to go that way or it's going to go that way, okay? And so if I put these two lugs on, like that, I just make a real short connector, but it goes over the top of the battery. If I do it like this, I run it out and around to the side, and I can maybe run it so that they don't go over the top of the battery. But there's about two, there's about an inch and a half above the battery, so this this hangs that cable out over her storage area, which I don't want to do. Uh, bad for her storage, bad for the cable. You might hit the lid the other way. I don't think it's going to hit the lid the other way, but we can find out yeah. right now. Do you ever take into consideration a new thing I learned about, which is the condensation loop? Where they're saying if, if, if the cable is above a connection, condensation can form and drip down, so you have, you loop it so the condensation doesn't go where you... Is that... I am really not worried about that in a battery that's waterproof. Mm-hmm. I'm, what I'm worried about is clearing this. We got there's plenty of clearance for that. No problem. I'm gonna go over the top. Since these distances are the same, I'm just gonna measure how long the cable needs to be since we want it to be just about right. I'm going to make two cables, one red, one black, to join these things together. We're thinking about using 
the battery post as the collectors. And these aren't long enough to do that because there's, we are going to stagger the connections so that you get full current flow through all the batteries. But I don't think these are long enough for all the leads we have because we got, we got the solar coming down, we got the converter coming out, we got the inverter coming out, we got the two jumpers, and we got the um, alternator coming back. So we're either going to need longer bolts if we're going to collect them at the battery or we're going to need a bus. What's in there? A little blade? What is it that's doing the cutting? What is that? It's a blade. And so what you do is you cut it around and then when you take it off you flip it 90 degrees and it cuts oh. it cuts that little side cut so when you grab it that's what comes oh, apart man. and it just peels right off. Nice. Very nice. And you know Great that none tool. of those conductors have been cut because the paper still yes. there. And you set the insulation depth by just screwing this up or down and exposing more or less blade. And so you set it for the insulation you're using so you only cut the insulation and not anything else. You know, you'll see people do this with just a, a exacto knife. That's me. And they'll roll it and stuff like that. And, and sometimes the copper comes off, sometimes yeah. it doesn't. And this is copper shield, which comes in a jar with a brush. And there's no way to use it without getting goo all over yourself. So I stuck it into this irrigation syringe so that when I use it, I just take it and put a little bit of, a, of it into the... Yeah. And that, that covers it all up. That, that fills the gap. And it's electrically conductive. Well, it's anti, so it's copper loaded. The reason it's the color it is, is because it's copper loaded anti-corrosion. And if you put it in something where you get a real good crimp, which this three point crimper is going to do, what happens is it fills all the air void, makes everything conductive, and also makes sure that it's never corroded. Copper shield. When you got wire this thick, and especially this thin, you want to make sure your lugs are oriented right. So these lugs are going to right. orient like right. that because they're going to go up against the same thing, right? right? So you got to be careful when you're making these things because thinner wire doesn't matter, but this thick wire doesn't like the twist. Yeah. So when you're putting this in, you know, if this went this way and this wanted to go this way, that's the way you build it, okay? It. And the way you do that is when you measure it, you mark a polarity mark on it. I didn't do that because they're the same. But if you if this was twisted, when you were measuring it, you'd put one lug on, put it in place, figure out where the other one is, mark a polarity mark on it, then you know that's where this has to go. But in this case, so this is called a three-point crimper. And I like it uh, because it's really controllable and it's really... You're not so, hammering it. You're not hammering it. And so what happens is you can really push on this while you're crimping it, okay? And you can put that in there and get it in real nice, okay? Spin it around to get that copper shield distributed. And now Flat I side. can make whatever oh. orientation yes. I want. Yes. yes, And it'll be pretty much exact. And that's what's called a three-point. So the big one is there on the flat side, and the other two are on the other side. So a three-point crimp is really nice because it flattens that back, yeah. puts two more crimps on the top. Right. It's really strong, okay? And it's so easy because you, you push it in so right. you get a nice big thing, and you can get any angle. rotation angle you want just by you know doing it. And so I like this crimper much better than the hammer kind. The hammer kind are a lot cheaper. Yeah. But this is so much more controllable. Absolutely. And that's ready to go. Get that cover shield all spun around. Get the orientation right. right. 
push it in and the last step is dual wall heat shrink tubing this is three quarter inch three to one glue lined tubing okay so three to one means if it's three quarter inch it'll shrink down to a quarter inch which makes it good for uh, 8 gauge, 6 gauge, 4 gauge, 2 gauge, 1 aught gauge, 2 aught gauge, 3 aught gauge, 4 aught's going to be a little big. Uh, the heat gun's hooked up to the inverter now, so we're going to turn it on. We're going to turn it on. We're going to set it to 600. I got the little concentrator on the front of it. Okay. And we're going to put this heat shrink tubing on the end of this. Start in the middle to melt the glue. Move your way out so you make sure all the glue is melted. Get that poked in there so it just seals so there's no, okay? And I know what you're saying, isn't that hot? A little bit, okay? You know when you're good, when you see the glue bubble out, right? And that's a electrically 100% non-corrosive waterproof. The uh, green Barilla pad, clean it with alcohol first. Yeah. Uh, scratch it with the green bill pad, then clean that. Clean it again. But, but clean both things. The zip right. bracket and the thing. Yeah. So yeah. it micro scratches it a little bit so it adheres okay. better. Okay. There you go. And I think you're, you're going to be solid. Uh, let's mark these where, the, where that hole's going to get drilled. You're just eyeballing? Yeah. Wait, no, you could see the hole. Peek underneath there. You could see where the hole is. Okay. Right. Okay. Let's. Let's well, pick it on, up. Let's get these. Okay. Yeah, I like it. Put a couple pieces, cut those down. They, they made these the way they are intentionally? Yeah, so the screws could be changed, and so you don't wear them out, like if they were just threaded holes and some right, of the other Right, batteries. right, right. But putting them there with this around them, I mean, you can't get a long bolt in there. Right. Unless you come in from the other side and do what you just did. Or if we had, like, a half-inch shorter one. Yeah. This will work. This means we got these studs sticking out there. Yeah. Okay. But this... this puts the jumper right up against the battery post for maximum electrical connection yeah. and gives us a bunch of room on this side to put the other stuff. So that's just what we'll do. Those are all six gauge? I don't know. They're so, different. They're different. So that's a five sixteenths. Oh. Yeah, see? <laughs> we'll still make it work. I mean, well, some people don't even use paste, oh. so we'll figure it out. We'll even put some on there. Yeah. We'll still make it work. So, now, here's the thing. You're going to put some circuit protection up here, right? Yeah. Okay. So I need to make a jumper. Right. Then the uh, breaker. Then I'm going to run by on the passenger side so it's on the passenger side when it gets down there. Okay, because the way the way their stuff works is one of the, that, that green block is between the car battery and the lithium battery. So there's some kind of lithium conditioner that has to, so you're going to have to go from the battery to the breaker, from the breaker to that thing, and from that thing. What's the thing, the green or the red? The orange one is, okay. And now you can't so, just go out of the lithium batteries to the DC fuse block. You've got to put that in between the DC fuse block and the lithium batteries. Just figuring out where I'm going to put the breaker for the isolator. This is like a good spot right here. I just want to make sure that if I use some self-tapping screws to set it, that there isn't a radiator or some electrical things that I'm going to get into in the process. And that also the hood can close. We just want to make sure the hood can close and we're safe on um, 
Yeah, it's just the mark. The electronics in the radiator, so yeah. I think we're in good shape. Now, to Jamie's point, um, the water pump should be hardwired to the fuse block. Sure. So you don't need that for the fuse block. But the, you want a, at least one 12 volt outlet where you can easily plug things in and plug things out. You know, like your laptop charger or your phone charger or whatever. If they're both underneath there, they're both kind of built into the system. These are uh, 100 amp inline breakers. They're probably made in China. They're not super expensive, but I've never had one fail, so I'm still rolling with it for now. The alternator is a 90 amp alternator, so we're right in there as close as we can get to uh, what it's going to be putting out. But it only would put out 90 amps in, in the case that the, the coach battery or the uh, starter battery was completely dead. So it's probably never even going to get close to that in all reality. Which I've tested that with my boss and it, it goes well. Better than what? Got to get it in there nice and tight. Anytime you don't have a tight connection with electricity, it uh, tries to make up for it on its own and it causes heat, which melts things and causes fires and all that jazz. So we don't want to get into any of that mess. So I just want to make sure all this stuff's in here as tight as possible with the right gauge wire for what we're doing. It's really not that complicated. I'm no uh, journeyman electrician, but what I'm working with, I'm pretty comfortable with. And there's one side of our breaker and I go, went ahead and disabled it so that, uh, you know, this is charged. So that the rest that I do, it won't be charged. And the last thing I'll do is close this when we're getting ready to uh, make it all work. Good. Yep. I have is okay, let's try that. Oh, I mean, if I went on the outside, then it's exposed to the elements and like scraping on something and what busting about open. The driver's side? What? what about the driver's I gotta side? wind up on this side though, so it's either yeah, but the driver's side over. Is completely open under that is, maybe that's the throttle cable. At this point, I need to get through the firewall. I've determined that I'm gonna go through on the driver's side and then pass over to the passenger side when I get to the end. So I'm looking for places on the firewall to go through with my wire. When I do something like that, it's good to have a pilot bit. This is just a pilot bit. And I look for things in the firewall to, to identify where I am. So in this case, like if you just start drilling willy nilly, you could hit a lot of things and cause a lot of problems. So we, we look for things that we can identify on both sides of the firewall. In this case, I'm using the throttle cable. So I'm gonna come out right beside the throttle cable, run my wire, and you may be saying to yourself, if you do things like this, wait a minute, if you drill a hole through the firewall, it's gonna have really sharp edges, and that's gonna cut into the cable over time, and it's a positive cable, it'd ground out, and you'd be right. So in my case, I'm gonna get in there, drill the hole, and either use a rubber grommet uh, or a rat tail file and many layers of electrical tape around the part of the insulation that is going to be making contact with the firewall This is a little bit of a leap of faith You just need to put everything in your favor as best as you can and I think that's where we're at and after I get the hole through I'm going to use this and this is called a fishing rod even though it doesn't look like a rod you'd catch fish with So it's good to have a fishing rod a pilot bit and to locate something on both sides of the firewall So you know where you're going and at yeah, yeah, it's okay. In fact, I might even want to come through from this end. But I have to be very careful coming from the inside out because look at all the things that are going on in the engine compartment, more, far more than what's going on going the other direction. <clears throat> all I want to do is go through with my pilot bit and then see where I am on the other side. That's why it's small. If it's the wrong spot, it's easy to, you know, patch that little hole and move on to another one. So we're not going for broke right out of the gate. We're trying to get an idea of what, what's gonna happen first. If 
a little bit of pressure. Just a little bit of pressure. I don't want to shove that thing through because I don't know what's going on over there. So let's see how we did. I'm gonna look for my bet. I don't see it. Let's try another spot. But in this case, um, this is the AC charger for the batteries. So when you plug into AC, this is what charges the batteries. This goes directly to the batteries according to their circuit diagram. So we're gonna do that. Coming out of the batteries and going to any 12 volt loads, you need to go through that this BGA thing, okay? I, I thought about coming out of this and going to the fuse block to, to eliminate one load, one link on there, but I can't do that because the fuse block's gotta come out of this because this is some kind of conditioner for the lithium batteries. I don't know enough about lithium batteries to <laughs> give you an exact description of what that what does, but I can guarantee you before too long I'll know. Okay. See once this once this is mounted, you'd never get that in there. So we'll just put it in now and, and let it. Well, that's true. Guess I gotta run that 10 gauge all the way down to you, Han Lee. A six gauge and a 10 gauge for the continuous ignition source. Um, unless, unless we put this up in the front. Well, this, can, this can go anywhere. I think we're, I would rather do that, but. Yeah, this can go anywhere. This, this is waterproof, it's ready to go. This is where the ignition switch needs to be. So. I would prefer to have it up at the front just so the wire for the continuous ignition source is close. It's on its way. Okay, cool, thanks. Which one, the green one or the red one? Uh, the green one. Um, the green one. The green one, the orange one is going. The green one is going. The orange one is staying. Um, so, uh, I don't know enough about this, but from what he said, uh, the green one is what goes between the alternator and the lithium batteries. It's an isolator. It's an ignition switched isolator so that they don't, your front doesn't discharge when you discharge my back. But also, it's not just a regular isolator. There's, I don't, I don't know enough about this, so I hesitate to. There's something going on that conditions the voltage, so that it's what the lithium ion like to see. And coming out of the lithium ion, you go into this, and coming out of this is what a standard 12 volt accessory needs to see. So you need these two things on the input and output because they're lithium. <laughs> okay, so this can go in the front because this is waterproof. This is fine. Okay, so according to him, yeah. this needs to go between the alternator and the, the coach battery. It needs an ignition line and a ground line. I can dig all that. Okay. I just did a quick circuit diagram and a list to make sure that as we hook things up, I can check them off and that way I know I got everything hooked up. I'm making the solar controller to the... battery fuse isolator or battery isolator fuse? Pardon me? Battery fuse isolator or battery isolator fuse? I like, I like to put the circuit protection as close to the battery as possible. Okay. So the solar controller has um, just compression uh, terminals. Now, all that means is you loosen the screw up, you put a wire in, you tighten the screw down. Now, if you put a bare wire in there, there's a pretty good chance that the screw is going to break some of the wires. I'm not sure whether there's a clamp in there or not. I'm going to have to take it off and look at it. But even still, that's a good idea is these are called ferrules and all they are is a little steel sleeve or aluminum whatever you slide over the wire and then you use this nifty little square crimper and what you get is a nice metal sleeve around the wire that's crimped on there with a little bit of strain relief and you put this up in there and the wires never get tensioned or cut or anything like that why there's lots of different kinds of wire uh, in the automotive world, there's TLX, S, X, TXL, SXL, um, and that has to do with the thickness of the, of the insulation. It's also the type of insulation. I buy, I buy SXL crosslink insulation, and crosslink just means it makes the insulation tougher. And uh, SXL is kind of a standard uh, insulation thickness for automotive applications, so that's what I use. Okay, so those are going to be the ones that go down to the battery.
you get in the limbo. Huh? Let's just give us a bunch to work with. We're using our hydraulic crimpers and we're crimp crimping a lug on this uh, six gauge wire. And then we go to the proper side on our isolator. And what I'm gonna do with this isolator is I'm going to use, prep the area with alcohol, clean it, and then use VHB tape to affix it to this. It can be taken off if it needs to be, but I'm also gonna give enough slack with the wires where they can pull this off. This is a fuse block, uh, fuse block so they're gonna be looking at fuses. So I want them to be able to take it off if they need to, but this is just an excellent place to uh, install the isolator where the hood's gonna close and everything's kind of centrally located and we can get to our uh, our continuous ignition source and whatnot. Let's take it off, we'll seal those holes and clean all these things and and attach it. And this right is still gonna open. That's not gonna interfere. So we're good, huh? Right on. That one we're good on. All right. Okay. There's that. Good. So all I gotta do is get wire in between. I'm cleaning the dirt off of the car with rubber alcohol because the rack is actually going to get glued down. We need to make sure all the impurities are off of it. So we, we use you know, rubbing alcohol or isopropyl alcohol and then we use a, a green Brillo pad to scratch it just a little and then we'll use the rubbing alcohol again to clean out all the you know, debris from scratching it, and then we'll adhere the rack. So, we gotta have one come from one of the positive leads to here, and from here, and and then from there up to here. So I got the lugs, here's a six gauge five sixteenths, a six gauge number 10, that's for here to here, and there's six five sixteenths to five sixteenths, that's down here to this. Let me just, do you wanna pull it from the end of the apartment, or pull it from here, out there, okay, here. you need, and then I can go from there. Okay, let me give you some tape. So here's the thought. If we put two ports in here, mm -hmm. you could run the refrigerator cord and plug it in there. Okay. And then plug the other one in the, okay? And, and that, what that means is that it would be completely out of the way of anything down here. And if at some point you wanted to hardwire that refrigerator in, then you got these two ports up here. Okay, so I, we, I think we can get them in there. I'm pushing it's just there it goes. I always take too much and then I waste. But it's better to come up too long than too short.
what I'm connecting right now is a battery isolator, also called a battery solenoid. And the reason that something like this would be a nice amenity for a vehicle that someone lives in that has coach batteries, coach batteries or house batteries or deep cycle batteries all mean basically the same thing. It means that you're drawing energy from batteries in the vehicle, but they're not the starter batteries. Starter batteries are made a little bit different. What we're doing here is we're taking power off of the alternator which in this case that's a 90 amp alternator it charges the it runs the vehicle and charges the battery when it's running well if we've got something charging batteries when it's running that we're already paying for why not go ahead and put a device on like this isolator that charges the coach batteries too in addition to her solar power let's say she's out someplace and she runs into four or five days of clouds and she's not getting the solar but she still has those power needs she could just start her car and charge her batteries up that way and also if she's running errands anyway this particular isolator is made specifically for lithium batteries and i'm not going to go into details because i don't know how to go into details but here's the deal lithium batteries are a little bit different than lead acid batteries so it takes the the electricity from the alternator and changes it, changes it in such a way as the lithium batteries can understand it and take power from it without harming anything so that's what we're doing here i've got uh, a fuse a uh, breaker that goes into the system in case we have a dead short somewhere for safety we've got our wires coming from the coach from the starter battery going to the coach battery we have a ground right here in the middle so i'm going to take that and i'm going to go to the frame someplace i'll just scrape a little bit of paint off with some sandpaper and ground this uh, isolator so it's grounded to the chassis and then we have a post here for a, a continuous ignition source and what that means is the way this isolator was designed it doesn't know when it should work or not there's a little solenoid in there that flips closed so it's open right now so the batteries can't talk to each other but when it's running you want the batteries to talk to each other so the way it knows when it's running is it gets juice from a continuous ignition source from the fuse block which i've already set up and it closes that solenoid so you're only having a closed loop between the two batteries when the alternator is running. I'm taking the wire that Jimmy drilled a hole in the firewall, took it, ran it around the back and I pulled off these uh, plastic pieces and I've run it down this trough right here. They usually leave a little bit of room for it and snap this side piece off, ran it through here. So now I'm got to run it down this one which really doesn't have any room for it but I think we can squeeze it in somewhere. And I'm just going to go back down through here and just keep going down to the back. These are Klein. If you're gonna be crimping uh, terminals on wires like 10, 12, 14, just get the Klein ones. Like these, don't get these. Get the Klein ones. They'll last forever if you don't lose them. Normally I have different tools out here for this stuff. I have a ratcheting box and combo wrench, but I'm not at my bus right now. So I'm just using what I can grab from other people in some cases. Some of my specialty tools are here, but some of them aren't. You're all right with the crescent wrench as long as you keep it tight. I guess we're just gonna put it on the feet. Okay. And then it's a double-sided tape. It's really heavy duty, so it'll stick really well. Um, but we're only gonna tape the feet so that if somebody wants to take it off to, for whatever reason, it'll be easy enough to take off. It's incredibly strong. Try to pull it, I, I think I don't, I'm as strong as to pull it out. I think it's not, I don't have any wires or anything, I don't think. There aren't any in there. The VHB tape is double-sided, and so you have to remove that red stuff to expose the second side, and it's hard to get it started. Want a razor blade? Ooh. You got one? It's better than fingernails.
I made an extra wire so they could take the lid off. That's why there's so much wire here. It's cool. When you pull this stuff on and we put this down onto the roof, it's not coming off. Your marks over there are probably the best ones to go off of. They're right in the middle. All right, we'll tuck it in there. Yeah, that wire doesn't long enough. No, it's longer. Okay. It's all right, we're not going to have any problems with the slats here, right? Yep. They just peeled the tape off this hole. I haven't tried this one. Let me look at it, because I'm not able to see it. What we can do is we can go to that and then come off of that and go down to the battery. Same thing. Let's lift it up. If you could push the wires past the mount, then I'll get it on. The, it's going to come over to this side. You, you always oh, okay. put the connectors up above, so if you do have to take the panel off at some time, you can take it yeah. off up there. Okay, so, so what we need is the there. extensions. We need the MC4 extensions. Okay, here it goes. Final stick. No second guesses. got to put a meter on these wires and put red tape on the positive. So we got to get those plugged in. You got uh, any dialect grease? No, no, the stuff for the uh, inside the connectors, the MC4 connectors. So what's going to happen is, if it's wrong, nothing will happen. If it's right, it'll light up. Okay, that's right. So, 35.2. Positive though. Oh, yours is Obviously, positive. the red one. All right. So did you, you gonna, say it's going to light up? Yep, it lit up. Oh, it did. It did. And the panel, even right now, with the sun that low, and behind the clouds, the panel was 35 volts. Oh, feral these. Oh, you said we don't have to on this one. So that's so well, you, full. You can, but we don't have to. So uh, it might be easier to take this off and put them on. Did you calibrate it for lithium? I haven't done anything. There's a screw underneath it that needs to be on. I think position number seven. We need to look at the manual. All right. So let's take this off and get a get a look at. That. Seven on for lithium. It's either four or seven. You got you're supposed to connect the battery before you connect the solar control. Yeah. But before you connect the panel. So we need to connect. I got the battery leads down here. Oh, you don't have them connected at the battery. That's all yet. that. I always do the battery first. No, 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 no. Always do the battery first. Yeah. They're just not connected down here. They're okay. connected in there. So we got to wait on that. So cool. I need uh, the six gauge lines that we were talking about, and we're going to have to have a chassis ground. 
Now the chassis ground can also be six gauge because the only thing the chassis ground is used for is for the stuff coming back from the alternator. Everything else back here is a closed system. If we didn't have the uh, isolators coming back, we wouldn't even have to ground it. We need a chassis ground in order for the isolator to work because you got to be on the chassis. Okay, but you know I'm grounded at the, at the isolator right now already. Yeah, right? but I mean the batteries need okay. a ground reference, a chassis reference. Okay. With without that, everything in here is positive to negative. This is a floating system; it all works without being grounded. Mm -hmm. Okay, but in order for the uh, alternator charge, because the alternator is grounded to the chassis, we have to ground the batteries to the chassis. Right. Since the lead coming back is six gauge, I figure the grounding wire can be six gauge, right? So we're going to need to come from there to somewhere, and I'm thinking maybe that. Okay. Okay, I'll make it. Okay. Probably just an 18 gauge with these number tens on it to we'll go floor. to the same chassis ground. Uh, this what? this uh, battery guard monitor yeah. needs to be grounded, and there's two. Uh, the center post needs to be grounded and it needs to be connected to the outer post. Oh. The outer post needs to be connected to the center post and they both need to be grounded in order for this thing to be hooked up the way she said to hook it up. Yep. Okay. One of these that comes down here. They take the bolt out where the bolt was, scrape it down to bare metal. Then we're going to put some um, copper shield on it, and then we're going to put this on it, and this is going to be the chassis ground. Okay. Everything here goes uh, positive and negative directly to the batteries. The inverter is positive and negative to the batteries. The converter is positive and negative to the batteries. Um, th this thing is, all the stuff back here is going to be positive and negative to these batteries. So if you didn't have the, the alternator charger charging line coming back, you wouldn't even have to ground it. But in order to get the uh, alternator to charge the back batteries, you have to have a ground reference for that. And the alternator is grounded to the frame. And so if we ground to the frame back here, then everything's good. We still need to install and wire the DC ports. Because we're going to stick this down to the top of the van roof and then use a zip tie to hold the connectors in place so the wires aren't flapping around in the wind. We can connect everything and then do the sockets okay. because the sockets are just going into the fuse box. So why don't we hook this up? Okay. Well, so here's what needs to happen. Uh, so this, and you can be doing this too. Uh, this and this and this need to go on that. Put the inverter one on first. First. Okay. The inverter. Then the chassis ground, then that thing doesn't matter. And so we'll use the nylock that they gave us. Okay. Can you get that on there? Do we have a brass washer you want to put on first? You want to put a nylock on that one? Yeah. Alright, so let me check there. We got jumper. This is the converter. This is the yeah, inverter. Works. This is the chassis. This is the solar. Well, can we put that on? It goes on this? It can go it can go either way. This one is this one is just the, the reference ground and the signal for this. So this one can go on either one. So why don't we put it on that one since yeah, it's so much easier? Good idea. Good idea. Alright. Converter, inverter, chassis, solar, signal. Chassis, solar, converter, inverter. So now on 
This one, yeah. we just put this. All right. So you get a nylock. Yep, it sparked. We, what's going on is we're touching positive and negative posts, and, and it's okay to touch the positive and negative posts. It's not going to hurt you if you touch a positive and negative post. Just look up War of the Currents on Wikipedia between Tesla and Thomas Edison. This is DC, but the reason we don't want to do it in this case is because of these wrenches will whoosh, touch. Well, here it wouldn't matter, but if the wrench touches if, the, if this, that wrench touches that because that's grounded, yeah gonna be trouble and they do make wrenches that are plastic all the way down to just this yeah. for that reason just so you know or we could tape this up with black tape if we wanted to uh, be thorough about it I'm just gonna be fast about it so there's a couple of options for you but that's why there's electricity that we can't see but it's happening like I just touched that with my hand and it didn't shock me but I didn't touch it with metal no, 12 volts is not enough to feed a you could you could wet your hands and grab both terminals of battery. So we got one going to the inverter, and one going to the converter. Where's the converter? Ah, there it is. This is, this is chassis ground for the inverter. Okay. All right. I forgot it was there. Apologies. We mm -hmm. could run this over to there, or you could put a self-tapper in for it. Okay. I don't think it's long enough to do much of anything. But it's. I was gonna. See. I was gonna bring it down to here, but I don't want to have you take that apart again. Let me just see what's inside of here. That, but it's only a chassis ground, so it's not the biggest deal. I could do this. So. Why don't I just put a terminal on it and just go right there with some sandpaper? Yeah. That's what I'm gonna do. Okay, so that, yes, that, that, and and that are going on there. I'm gonna wait for Inverters, inverters all have large capacitors that are basically sitting there constantly charged even when they're not running. But when an inverter is brand new and you hook it up, the first thing it does is suck a whole lot of current to recharge those capacitors. So there it is. All right, the very last thing, well not the last thing to do, but so this is going to, this is going to go to the fuse box, to the fuse block, okay? Okay. So it's all it's all ready to go. Okay. But we can't we can't do that until we put the fuse block on. All right. So right now, all we need to do is so um, this is the line that comes up from the uh, alternator. Altern yeah, from the isolator. It's going up here, connects to the BGA. Yeah. Which goes down here and connects to the positive terminal. So this is both the BGA and the uh, inver uh, the isolator. And that's fine because this this is just like having a solid wire, so that's fine. This is the solar. This is the converter. Why is the solar? Whoa! Out? This is the inverter. The solar the solar is charging, um, and they all go on here. Okay. And I'm gonna hold them so that shit doesn't happen again. Okay, hang on. Let me get the wrenches. Let's get this thing out. I think it's okay. okay. And when these go on, the only thing left to do is the fuse block. <coughs> and the 12 volt sockets. Yes. But the inverter, the converter, the batteries, the solar panels, and the, and the isolator are all in place. All right, you which put is, them all on? Let's do it. Well, let's start with the, the big one, one, the first. inverter. Boom! I told you. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like the insulation is a little bit overdone on this. Is it always the biggest or smallest? Yes. Then the uh, then the converter. Okay, I can't see for your hand. Sorry. That's all right. And the converter is also charging. And then the solar, which is also charging. And we're going to have to flatten these. Okay. Okay. Let me get it started, and then you can okay. flatten them. Okay. Now try your heat gun. Oh man, it works. It's it's there. The display is on. It's 13.4. So it just needed the remote. It just wanted the remote. I wonder if that cable is in plugged to the back of it. Just 
So what else do we need to do? Because I got to go give this car away before dark, this van. Okay, so now what we do is we take that panel and we put that panel on here. Um, it goes where the panel goes. We'll notch the, we can notch the side, just let it walk right yeah. through that. Well, this goes all the way back. Huh? 